jump in? Well, okay, got it. Um, do I let everybody in? I think Jordan's about to do it. Jordan's gonna let let him in, Jordan. <laughs> Let's open the gates. Okay, yes. wow, open the gates. All right. Hello, uh, Brittany and Peter and Lowry and Pranja and Michael and John. You're beautiful faces. Hello, Cindy. There we go. Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie Rue, Stuart, Michael, Janoff, May Meng. Hey, May. What's up? Uh, Shikar, Michael Edwards, Paolo, San Paolo, Michael Janoff, Max, Naomi. Dennis, Sabrina, beautiful, oh, good, wonderful people. Wow, love this. Helga, good to hear you, old friend, out there across the pond in Germany. Nice. I'm pulling up this chat too, guys. Awesome. So we can get that. Stuart, fun. good to see you. Rick Smith. Here we go. Just looking at all you all good handsome faces out there, and some of them. I'm just reading your names. I don't see people. <laughs> So y'all can turn in your cameras if you want, unless you're in your pajamas and you're embarrassed by your Flintstone pajamas, then you don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I live in these, man. These are my, um, they're like pajamas, man. I, I oh. live in these in, 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 the, in the winter, man. Um, what are they, Voris or something like that? V-O-U-R-I? Man, God, they're comfortable. Oh, yeah. Got get a pair, man. They are comfy. <laughs> And me and Benny have spent way too much of our work checks on Lululemon. I mean, they see us coming, they go, there's those two suckers. <laughs> yeah, I need to check them out. I got, I, I got a pair of pants from them uh, a few years ago, and I, did, I didn't like them, but I probably got something wrong. It's just like I need to get like, I don't know. These are, these are nice. These are like real thin uh, sweatpants, and they are comfy, man. Well, I'd rather have those thin sweatpants than the thin bank account from all the shopping I've done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, well, a thousand bucks? I ain't coming here anymore. Exactly. I'm going to go Casey, Casey's, Casey says uh, rocking the scrubs. Absolutely, man. Some comfy, yeah. <laughs> some comfy scrubs. Well, uh, I'll, I'll get underway. Um, first of all, I'd like to offer, first of all, thank you so much we're taking time out uh, to meet with your guitar sage, who is truly a guru sage at, amongst the teaching world. There is nobody who has more content, more free tips. I, I get so much off his free tips. I have his program and I watch that, but I watch his free tips too. And sometimes I can go off on a writing tirade just from the last strong pattern that you gave me. That was so amazing. So one minute thing. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Oh man, I commented immediately. I said, now I can play half of all of Eagles songs. <laughs> yeah, I think you commented back on that after Exactly. Said, well, yeah. you know, you've, it's like it's like you. You've done if you do something enough times, and everybody everybody in the chat knows this, uh, whatever your profession is, when you do something over and over and over again you start seeing patterns right which is how you're able to direct people to do you know to to sing and and they can't see it because they hadn't seen it ten thousand times like you have um so like in the same way you know you come across all these these patterns and uh it's you know that's hence how we teach right exactly exactly i also want to introduce my Glorious associate Benny Meza, who is a master associate, one of very a very few handful, who uh, probably earned that way before I gave him the title. <laughs> Sandbag <laughs> nice, for a while. I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make you a master when when it's so undeniable that anybody who says otherwise would feel foolish. But if you haven't had a session with Benny or any of my other fantastic associates, it's worth it. I mean, everybody comes out bragging. And sometimes they say, hey, Brad, I like my lessons with you, but can I work with Benny? It's absolutely. That's so what I nice. want to do is extend this out. As, as you've done, because you got other people come in and record with you all the time on your stuff. Yeah. Right? Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you 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 find the world's greatest masters in everything that you do, and you have built these relationships over the the I don't know how many years now have you been doing this? Well, man, it was a uh, in two thousand and six is when I first posted up on YouTube, knowing that that 
platform wasn't really going to do anything and and I would just be posting it for my 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 handful of students uh back in the day I had uh, I think I maxed out at about um gosh somewhere around 70 lessons a week and that's where I was just I was tapped out I wanted to reach more people um and so I I was you know basically teaching the same Taylor Swift song 12 times in a week, whatever, whatever the hit song of whoever it was that week, you teach it enough times, right? Again, here talking about patterns. And so I would just upload stuff to YouTube. And then uh, it wasn't till, gosh, probably about 2012. Yeah, it was 2012 when I, when I created my first course, I'd written books before then, but really had no intention on doing anything online, anything more than just kind of assisting my one-on-one, uh, you know, students, but after about over 10,000 one-on-one lessons, I realized that I'm not, there's no way for me to teach the world <laughs> doing one-on-one lessons. There's just absolutely no way to do that. So that's when I created the the books and created the courses and, and basically took those years of, of study and years of seeing patterns and creating curriculum and what have you for my one-on-one students that I just, it was a natural fit to just start creating something that everybody could grab in a digital format and then hence where we're at today um, and then started onboarding other teachers as well who uh, were exceptional in their specific thing, right? So like you um, you teach the core of, of vocalization, uh, but then, right, if someone wants to go into um, heavy metal, they need to be able to protect their voice and still sing properly, but the nuances are going to be different than opera, obviously. So then you start getting into that. And so what I what I started doing was getting my buddies who, you know, being in Nashville, getting my buddies who were just like these phenomenal players, better than me at their specific genres, and then and then creating courses with them too. So that's uh, something I did for a few years there, which has also uh, helped build our 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 courses you know it's it's really been amazing i mean uh you you know you 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 honored me too nicely when we had our our common friend matt over at urban market and he said he he said hey uh, he wants to meet you he's he's heard of you as your program and then he said who and he said you know eric and he goes you know he has all the guitar courses i said that eric and i've got one on your website i said i've been watching this guy for years Holy cow! I, so I was a little nervous. <laughs> so, but but we hung out. And we're we've been buddies ever since. I've been out to your house out there in beautiful Florida. Y'all would covet because his house is amazing, and he's a walking <laughs> distance to the to the beach out in Thirty A, which is Thirty A is the what they call the Emerald Coast. Yeah. It is the most beautiful, warm, temperate water, clear, beautiful water you could ever swim in, and. Uh, yeah, and sharks don't eat people there, so that's pretty nice. No, they see you. They see you, and they don't. They're not really looking for for that, unless it's a bull shark. But yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess I went there, and they said that they had twenty something uh, whale sharks in one day cruise in there. The guys watching them from the with the thing he said, "Yeah, we had an eight foot one going between you. It did didn't bother you just." Uh, an eight foot shark was in this water. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm gonna no. stay in the shallow, <laughs> but they don't bother you. It's kind of fun, you know. Yeah, eating plankton or not, they may decide to uh, evolve and want to eat yeah. humans, like, in that that moment or whatever. <laughs> it's a man meat. Well, yes. uh, uh, we've got a bunch of questions for you, and uh, I'm gonna let Benny lead this part, and then I'll chime in. So, yeah, well, <clears throat> Eric and Brett, thank you for letting me butt in today. I absolutely love the opportunity to be here to kind of squeeze in and ask you guys questions um and and really i'm asking you questions for me it's things that i really want to know um but my first instrument eric was actually the guitar and i i learned to play or i got an interest in it watching one of my older cousins play i thought he was a rock star and i wanted to be just like him so he actually got me a guitar um when i was in elementary school and handed it to me and showed me some riffs um, so I'm curious, how did you get your start? Man, uh, a similar way uh, for for me, I had I heard at the time Def Leppard. I heard I heard a band in a specific song, and I remember it as clear as day. 
And I was absolutely mesmerized at 14 years old. It was something that I had to be involved with, just like you guys with singing. You know, there's some song or, you know, whether it was, you know, Pavarotti or uh, or Ozzy Osbourne. I don't know who it was, but it, we all had that that person that that uh, muse that made us go, "Oh my gosh, can I? Could I do this?" Um, and so for me, that wasn't a question. Can I do this? It's like, when can I do this, and how do I do this? And you know, you you get obsessed enough about something, and then you're off to the races. You're going to figure it out. It doesn't matter what it is that you desire to do. If you are obsessed enough you are going to be able to find, it's the way our brains work, the reticular activating system, right? You get that thing set and you say, this is what I want and it happens. So for me at 14, I just knew that I had to play that specific riff that I heard. And that was all it took for me to just go, okay, well, that wasn't terribly hard. It was challenging. And while it was challenging, it was super fun, right? Um, and, then, and then just one thing stacked on top of another and a bunch of my buddies played, and um, and so they kind of welcomed me into the whole club of playing guitar and what have you. And within like a year or two of playing, I had surpassed them just because I was obsessed with it. Right. Just because I wanted to do it so badly and uh, and spent all my time doing that. I wasn't um, I wasn't much for like parties. And uh, plus, I lived an hour away from school. I went to a parochial school. So I, I lived pretty far away. I brought the guitar on the bus with me, played it on the way there, on the way back at lunchtime. And the second I got home and uh, my my grades reflected that perfectly too. Uh, but I, I was just obsessed with it and uh, and actualized. And and this is this is one thing that uh, that I that I try to get across to my students always, whether they're in my courses or not. I do this on social as well, is to understand that there is no thing that you cannot do if you set your mind to it. And I know that that just sounds like fluffy, whatever, you know, but it's an absolute truth. If you are obsessed with something enough, your mind figures out a way, the universe figures out a way to get that information to you because it knows that it's, you're, you're gonna be a steward of that information, you're gonna do something with it. So for me, um, I've always loved helping people, uh, animals. Uh, I just love, I love to improve things. Uh, my, my father was an engineer. Uh, so I, that's built into my DNA to figure something out, to hack it, to figure out the best way to do it, the steps that it takes to get from here to there. Uh, and then my obsession with wanting to improve the world, to help people, um, I have a, a, a passion for, for people, for, uh, animals, for children, for, you know, I've just always wanted to help. And so this was a perfect uh, segue, a perfect marriage of these two beautiful things that I love, music and helping others and leading people to someplace. And to be able to see those, um, to be able to see that progress happen to where I know that they can do it, but they don't know that they can do it. You, you run into this all the time, Brett, which uh, you know, you know, Brett said he was watching my videos. I was watching his videos and had singing success like ages ago, had this DVDs. I still have them. Um, and I would plug those into my car and listen to them all the time, knowing, I mean, I was a guitar player. I wasn't a singer. I could never sing. You know, I, I couldn't harmonize. I always try to harmonize. I always follow the, you know, but then you realize, well, hold on a minute. This singing thing is like my guitar playing and i know that i couldn't do that and now i can do this because of through practice and so eventually you learn to harmonize you learn to to stick to a specific note you start off with small pieces and now all of a sudden you can start hearing harmonies and you can start you know doing those things that you could not do before and i say it i just had a a, a live broadcast with my folks which which by the way is something that i do uh in in my program in in my pro program is I, I go live three times a month with my students and we do a, a powwow just like we're doing right now. Uh, and so I'll answer those questions in real time so that they're not, you know, they need further explanations of, of what have you. But um, why was I going there? Um, uh, talking about, um, oh, it'll come to me in a minute. 
Well, can can I jump in there and ask? Yeah, you? yeah, please do, please do. I'm probably taking the floor too much here. Anyhow, I'm ex I get excited about it. People are passionate about music and about learning and what have you. I see, I see. Uh, Stuart has his guitar out there, so beautiful, nice, Stuart. Yeah, um, and I think as coaches, we can all relate, right? You just want to help somebody so much that you, sometimes it's can't stop. I want to give you this note. I want to give you step A, B, C, D. Let's keep talking about it, sort of a thing. Yeah. Um, was there a point in your um, development as a guitar player where you reached a cap and felt like you needed to find your own instructor or, or just find instruction? For, for me, you know, when I uh, started playing in bands in middle school and high school, um, everyone was a massive fan of Metallica and Kirk mm -hmm. Hammett was insane. The things that he would do in, uh, you know, in his solos, it was crazy and I couldn't do it. So that- right. That was that was what got me into taking guitar lessons. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. And like for me, especially now, I was literally was just thinking about this yesterday because I'm I'm getting into gardening, and there's a lot to know about gardening. And um, you can go on the internet and watch videos on YouTube, and I do it all the time. How do you sprout? How do you seed? How do you uh, harden plants? How do you do this, that, the other thing, right? So that's great. Um, and we have this for guitar. We have this for vocals. I've got probably 1,500 videos on YouTube, um, not, not including the, you know, 1,100 something or so that I have inside inside of my course that that is is just for my, my private folks. But... Um, you know, to, to have a mentor, to have somebody who can guide you and get you to the place that you desire to go, it just saves so much time, absolutely so much time. And for me anymore, um, it's like those things are helpful, especially when you need a quick answer or something. But like the long game, if you are invested in your in your in your your tennis stroke or, or you know golf stroke or 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 your vocals or guitar or anything else it's you can do that uh but there's so many things that you don't know it's like that the, the the problem with that sort of learning is we don't know what we don't know and so you know you get online and someone's teaching you something whether it's guitar vocally and you're like oh that's awesome well they only have a very short time that they can tell you this because they're going to lose your attention anyhow right because the whole thing especially now on youtube or any of these places is getting people's attention so not only do you have clickbait and you have people like just straight out lying you know all sorts of uh you know information misinformation whatever you want to call it that word's been uh slaughtered so but you know what i'm talking about right it's like they they tell you one thing and then you're like yeah but that's not right for every situation and so the way i teach my students is as i say there are no rules there are no rules in music there's music theory and there's rules of thumb so like you know if i'm holding the guitar like this well this is how most people hold the guitar they don't play it like this unless you're Jeff Healy, mm -hmm. who could play circles around me blind and would put the guitar on his lap and play like this. So I'm not gonna tell Jeff Healy that you can't play guitar like that. Uh, you know, there, so so for me, there, there are rules of thumb and that's the place to start. Um, meaning this works for 99% of the people out there. I'm also a big fan of Pareto's rule. Uh, saying, right, if you if you know the right 20% of the stuff, you can yield 80% of what it is you're looking for. Mm. But you got to know what that 20% stuff is. And you go to YouTube, you're not going to know what that 20% stuff is because you're going to get whatever excited that guitar player that day. Or then you get into teachers who have who, who are loaded with ego that say, well, this is the only way to do this. And it's like, uh, you definitely want to run from any teacher like that because Yes, there are rules of thumb, uh, but you may be on to something new. I don't know if it's if it's like that for 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 vocals. Uh, I would say it probably isn't as much, although there uh, uh, you could probably clear us up on that. I, I'm sure there are some things that are kind of or unorthodox, like for instance, like in screamo music, right? Yeah. Everybody thinks they're blowing their vocal out, but if you're doing it right, you're not. You're doing a vocal fry, 
a Correct. proper a proper vocal fry, right? Yes. So, right. Um, but it sounds like you're gonna bleed, you know, from from the larynx. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, right. So to me, there is um, there is a very definitive. It's not to say that you can't do it another way, like I did. Just started off playing a Def Leppard song on a nylon on a student nylon string guitar, uh, but for most people, they're not going to have the drive that I had, where I was so obsessed with it that it didn't. It almost didn't matter where I started, unless someone started me off with jazz and said, "You have to learn this first, I probably would have quit. And that's what happens with a lot of people: is they they start playing the instrument or they start singing or whatever new thing they do. And they don't get the proper instruction in the proper uh, order because there's definitively an order. And uh, because of that, they quit and they go, well, I, I'm not cut out for a guitar. And it's like, there's nothing that could be further from the truth. Everybody, if you can speak, you can sing. If yes. you can, if you can move your fingers, you can play guitar. People say, "Oh, my hands are too small." It's like I've got. Uh, trust me, I've got videos that that will bust any one of those myths. When you see these little Korean children playing on these these fat mm -hmm. neck uh, classical guitars, uh, and just you know, it's like there there are no excuses, you know. Yes, and and that's a was one of the questions we had uh, prepared for you is is that whole thing that people ask us. Can anyone say, well, can you talk? Okay, good. Your vocal cords work. And now we just have to get you on pitch. Right. Make it interesting. And then find your high notes. We just have to coordinate the voice. And uh, if you can, I say, if you can talk, you can sing. If you can cry, you can sing high. And that's about it. Uh, that's it. Yes. Yeah. It's much more complex than that. And what happens is we, you and I give all these vocal tips but tips aren't the same thing as training. Yes. I would say amateurs take tips, but pros train with a plan. And that, like you said, the, the gaps that are left in a person's training because they took a shortcut. Yeah. The problem with the shortcut, y'all, is you get in a hurry. And if you don't learn it right, you will go back and relearn it and it'll be frustrating. It'll try your patience. Nothing good happens or tastes good that is in a hurry. So if you throw your food in a microwave, it tastes better in an oven. But one girl I teach says, yeah, but I mean, I'm always in a hurry. I said, I know you're always in a hurry. You sing like you're in a hurry. You write like you're in a hurry. Just got, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta do this. I said, if you do that, your life will speed ahead of you. It'll run faster. You slow down your pace, you chill. You take a breath and say, all right, let's, let's figure this out. I'm going to put my food in the oven and go take my time practicing piano, practicing guitar, working on my music, writing my songs. I'm going to enjoy the process. And suddenly you'll notice that time will stretch. You, you, absolutely. And, Eric, you and I have talked about this. Yeah, um, mindfulness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, when you let go of that time, it stretches. It yeah. widens. The more you're in a hurry, the longer the road gets. It's it's ironic. Um, yeah. a, a piano genius lady that I've been working with told me, she says, we, we kind of coined something. She said, you know how to play this really hard piece. It's the same thing with guitar. You know, my son's been watching your videos, get some, playing all this stuff that you, tons of Eagles tunes and some John Mayer and some other stuff. He's getting so good. You'd be, you'd be surprised. Little Caleb's killing it. Love it. Oh, good. Yay. But, but he uses the same principle that you teach. And then my friend Graciela says, play one note. Mm -hmm. Then play two notes. Absolutely. Then play three notes. Then play four notes. Mm -hmm. If you're patient enough to hear me say this, you're patient enough to play this. I and someone it. said, and, and I'm just putting three seconds of uncomfortable silence in between each note. Imagine putting 15 seconds. You guys would be like, you're killing me, Brett. Yeah. But 15 seconds is four notes per minute is 40 notes in 10 minutes. Yeah. 80 notes in 130 minutes. 
if I had ever learned that slow, some of these really difficult Bach counterpoint pieces that I slaved over for six years could have been done in six weeks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You play a measure, one measure a day. You play, you strum that. Okay, strum. Okay, now you got the chords. You got the chords under the fingers. Just play that chord until you get comfortable. That's what you said. Play to the comfort. You're squeezing too hard. You're pushing too hard. You, it ain't that tightly packed. You and I have talked about this. Yeah. The thing that, the uncommon wisdom that you have to allow a person to learn at a natural pace ends up giving them an expedited pace. The slower pace ends up faster. Absolutely. Sprints to this is not a hundred meters. This is a marathon and you better pace yourself and enjoy the jog because you Abs won't. Absolutely. Make Mindfulness. Um, I have, a, I have a, a few like psychology videos uh, in, in my series that I start off right in the beginning because to me, uh, the psychology of anything is going to be 80%, right? If you think you can't do something, then great job. Now you won't. Just because you're thinking. So you have to get that straight first. And that's a hard one to get first. It's a hard one to get across because it's almost like you, you know, when when you are when you believe a particular something, you believe in it. And just saying it over and over again feels really, really uncomfortable. So you kind of have to go outside of yourself and you have to lean into someone who's ahead of you and who can go, look. You don't, you're not seeing the forest of the trees, you know, or whatever that expression is. You're missing it, right? So, so like, you got to just trust me and understand that that what you're looking for is available to you. But you, but it's it's a process. And if you think about it, right? So, uh, this one of the videos I was talking about is, is what I call slow it down, break it down. And it's is this concept exactly? If you have something that's 16 measures long, or if you're going to hike up Mount Everest. You don't think about the end. It's like, obviously that's where we're going, but like you think about step one. If you have 16 measures, you're looking at measure one, at beat one of measure one. Once you get that, and and I really, I mean, I, I feel so firm about this because it has been shown to me tens of thousands of times in my life that when you honor what you know whatever your belief system is i you know the universe god whatever there's something there that if you do a particular thing and you honor that thing the next thing will show up every single time but if you don't honor the one thing the next thing won't show up it's going to go to somebody else that's where the word genius comes from is is genie um and you know that's this is why certain things are invented all over the world at the same time is because there is a there is something else there's an ether whatever and that information is disseminated and whoever picks up on it and is a good steward of that information is going to get the reward and that's how it works and you can do that over and over and over and over again as many times as, as you desire but the the you know slowing something down breaking it down like that understanding the psychology uh is the only way so people you know what happens is Either you voluntarily go, yeah, this is what I want to do, or out of pure desperation, you go, I give up. And then usually that's when things start happening because you've, 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 slowed, you've slowed things down. Um, I have a seven-year-old boy. Uh, I have a 27-year-old daughter. But my seven-year-old boy, you know, when I'm teaching him something, um, if I lean over to him and I'm like, gosh, what's your problem? You should be getting this faster. It's, that would never work. It's not going to help him. But we do this to ourselves all the time. Mm -hmm. I should be getting this quicker. I should be better at this. I should have gotten this by time, by, by now. By what standard are we, are we saying these things? Like, it's just not even true. But there's that voice that uh, whatever, whether it came from a parent or it came from society or we conjured it up ourselves, whatever, it's there. And it's because I, I still will... You know, I'll play a riff a thousand times and I'll be like, how is that guy playing this thing three times faster than me? How many times did he play that when I've played it a thousand times? That is crazy. That this, you know, and then you start going, well, there, there's obviously some sort of difference between him and me. No, nope. it's called practice, right? Sorry, going no. off on it. <laughs> I get excited about it.
let's uh let's take a step back for a second because you guys mm -hmm. both alluded to something if if i can ask you both to put on your simon cowell hat for a moment and i'll just share a quick short story because yes an instructor who is a professional in in, in the art sees the whole thing right sees the forest from the trees like you said eric and um for for me recently i mean we see it in lessons all the time we help give people perspective but recently um i discovered a family member um, is learning the guitar, one of my younger cousins. And and he loves shredding. He loves like the really fast tremolo picking style and he can do it fast, but there was one thing that was really compromising the sound of his, of his guitar playing. He doesn't know what a metronome is and he's not aware of the fact that he starts at 70 beats per minute and ends at 150. You know, he just keeps speeding up and speeding up and um, that makes him sound amateur. Yeah. So. I, um, one of the things I, th I think we really want to remember is that amateur guitar playing <clears throat> can, can really compromise good singing, right? So why, why does great accompaniment matter and why do people need to learn from an instructor? It's because they, uh, they don't see everything. They don't see the mistakes they're making and they don't see how they kind of suck. Just being yeah. honest. Yeah. And some mm -hmm. people need to hear that like, hey man, this sounds terrible. No one's going to yeah. want to hear this if you put it out there. So can you guys talk to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you saying that sparked something in me uh, when, you know, for, for me starting off as, as a guitar player and then eventually uh, getting out of the, the heavy metal bit, I still love that, that style, but then started getting into singer songwriter, moved to Nashville, um, got, got into, you know, folk, but singer songwriter style, um, <laughs> you know, where you could just pick up an acoustic guitar and it was more about the song and it was more about the vocal. And that's when I really started going, man, this is cool. This feels good to be able to sing and not just play like it was another part of my being coming out. And and I don't know what I would have done without without playing guitar. I mean, I, I play piano. I took a couple years in college and what have you. And um Anybody, anybody in the in the stream here who who's played piano before, uh, you know, you playing in the key of C is is really easy, but you know, even just vocalizing, right? If you're just walking up your arpeggios, God, you need to know every single sharp and flat and every single key, or at least you need to know the fingering, right? So, um, and that's that is what it is. That's that's what that instrument is about. Uh, it's, it's great in so many other ways, uh, but that's the part I don't love about it. Whereas with guitar, I could easily take a song and, uh, and I could say, okay, well, this is in, um, okay, this one's in C, you know, and if, if my vocal, if I, my vocal was like, well, I don't, I don't like that. Then, you know, I like would simply just capo it up a half step. And I don't have to think about sharps or flats. Now I'm still at, you know, and uh, so like that to me was uh, such a, like, it seemingly is just like, oh, well, so what? It's just a capo. But like, think about the difference of playing, changing keys, going through all 12 keys on the piano, as opposed to the guitar. You just need a capo. And now all of a sudden, if you can play songs in the key of G and C, which are the easiest keys, same thing on piano. Those are, those are the two easiest keys, right? Because G has one sharp, uh, F sharp, and then uh, the key of C is all the white keys. So easy enough. So, but but to me, just to be able to keep things in the in those realms, which are kind of like the songwriter realms, uh, the the keys that they use the most, and then just to be able to use that capo helped me out so much with my vocals. Um, because what I was able to do is, you know, if I was, um, uh, I don't know why, whenever I, whenever I use this as an example, I always play Folsom Prison Blues. For, for, even though I've taught thousands of songs, it's the, it's the first song that comes to mind. But like, so, so one thing that I teach in my program is singing and playing guitar at the same time. Because to sing, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, and before that, I preempt it with something called the juggling unicyclist on a tightrope. Uh, and the psychology is, you know, you go to the circus and you see this guy doing this thing, right? He's juggling, he's on a unicycle, he's on a tightrope. And you go, well, how in heaven's name could you do that? Well, because what that person did is they learned how to juggle with two 
objects, not three or five or however many they're using now. They learned to just do that. And again, this goes back to what you were saying, Brett and Benny, is, is being in the moment, being mindful, because that is the only place you can be. You can try to, to think of multiple things at once, the multitasking world that we live in, but that's not scientifically sound. You can only think of one thing and be in one place at a time. So a juggling unicyclist on tightrope, he's going to learn one skill and he's going to get good at that particular thing. And then he's going to focus on another skill and he's going to get good at that thing. And then walking on a tightrope is going to be the third skill. And then eventually he's going to be like, man, I can do these things so well. I'm going to kind of dabble with two of them at once. And then he starts being able to do that because your conscious mind can only think of one thing at a time. Your subconscious is infinite and can think of multiple things at a time because it's connected to a whole nother a whole nother realm this is why when you when your conscious mind and you're juggling and you're like god i can't juggle these two balls and that guy's doing five on a tightrope you know you get the you get the concept right so um one of the one of the courses inside of of my pro version is um singing and playing guitar at the same time because basically what i do is i, I teach people okay you got lyrics that you're trying to work with you got melody you're trying to work with you've got rhythm you're trying to work with and that's just the vocals now when we're talking about the guitar you've got the chords you've got the strumming you've got the changing from chord to chord you got like 10 different things just easily like that right so like how do we break that down and you'd break it down like anything else but unless you know to do that you're gonna go i suck i can't do this well that's no one, no one just got it at first, right? They they found some way, but it was always having to do with slowing things down, breaking things down. So if I took uh, Folsom Prison Blues, I would go, I hear the train coming, you know, just by strumming one note. And where where my mind is is focused on the singing, I hear the train coming, it's rolling around the bend, and I ain't seen the sun shine since. I don't know when, and I would slow it down to whatever pace I need to. And I might then loop that part just till I have it. And what happens is, so this, what I found is when I did this, my guitar playing got better and my singing got better because what happened is one part of your brain can only focus on one thing at a time. So I'm, so if I'm focusing on the singing, now my subconscious is like, I got it, bro. I'll play. You sing, and now what happens is now my guitar playing just starts becoming automatic. Uh, vice versa happens if you're just focusing on the guitar playing. If 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 your strength is the vocals, right? Then your brain will start going into automatic, and it'll go into your subconscious. You'll be singing with your subconscious, which is where you want to be, because if you're too if you're too conscious about your singing, um, just like. I don't know if it's like this for you guys. It is like this for me. If I'm too conscious about my guitar playing, I'll mess up. But if I let it flow, because I've done it 10 million times, it just flows because it's coming from a different part of my being, right? And so my what I found was is that uh, by playing guitar, my vocals improved massively. And then I was able to work on harmonies and what have you. So I could go, oh, there's that's the third of the chord. So I just need to know that I mean, I use all these cheats when I'm when I'm when I'm trying to find harmonies and what have you. And I'll be like, OK, so the bass player is playing that E right before we go into that part. And that's my first note. And then I'll I'll cling on to that note that he's playing. And then next beat, I'm singing an E. And so but and I don't know how other people do it. I mean, I, I, I know that that, uh, you know, people have different skills, different levels and what have you. Um, from just the way they were raised or what they've practiced. But for me, having some sort of thing to grab onto uh, in the neck is, is very helpful with singing uh, because then I can, I can mani manipulate it and, and do my harmonies and everything else. So uh, that it's helped wonders with that. So I don't know if I kind of went off on, <laughs> didn't quite answer that question there, but no, I was answered, answered a bunch of others. <laughs> I, I want to allot it to you, Brett, but um, just really quickly, there's no shortage of icons who are multi-instrumentalists from Prince to Eric Clapton to uh, Stevie Wonder, right? Playing the drums on Superstition, playing the keys mm -hmm. and singing and stuff. And I think Absolutely. some of the things you pointed out, Eric, are that um, you, you become aware 
of certain things that you wouldn't necessarily think about if you're just a singer when you start playing the guitar because there's harmony and rhythm to it. But Brett, um, we've gone to multiple rounds and shows together and I've heard you make comments about accompaniment you know, like, uh, um, I remember one singer and she was phenomenal, insane range. Mm -hmm. And she was accompanying herself on the keyboard, but she was playing the most basic triads. Everything's in root position oh. and scooting all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Instead of going from a C to a G, she's go C, G, A, F, C. Yeah, sure. And you can do the C, G. Right. So I had to use a sustain pedal and it was clunky and yeah. second nature like her singing was. Right. That's so one thing I see with that is, and, and people say, well, should I just, if I play piano, should I just do piano instead of voice? I'm kind of jumping off a little bit with this comment, but no, I have, the problem with the piano, piano it has a whole bunch of benefits. Mm -hmm. but there are no two instruments that go together so well as piano and guitar and yet are completely different instruments. Completely. They have nothing in common. I mean, the look, the sound, everything, yet they blend together. So that's a good thing. But the thing that limits a piano, you can't strum a piano. Yeah. You can't strum a piano and there's something about a strum. Yeah, I can't bring that. I'm not taking this down to the, when I come to the beach and see, I'm not gonna go down with a light a fire. Man, there's nothing better than a fire on the beach, isn't there? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And if you get, give a fire, you better have a, a guitar down yeah. there. So. Yeah, yeah. With guitar, uh, I mean, you know, you know, every instrument has its own uh, pros and cons. I, I suppose if that's the way we want to look at it. But like, yeah, with the guitar, I mean, you can arpeggiate chords, you can strum, uh, you can, you know, you can drive a song. Because if I take a, if I take a, a, a tune and I uh, and I want drums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Eric. You know? I'm sorry, your microphone yeah. cut out just now when you did ah, that. It's so it's sorry. It's... Okay. Can you hear that? Um, you might have to change your audio settings. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let me let me try this. Mm, let me try this electric here. This this may work. I don't know if this is hooked up or not. So you can set it to live performance. Yeah. I Can think... you hear that? You'll want to go into your audio settings on Zoom. Yeah, go there uh, where it says. Can you hear this? No, no. no. no uh, okay. You're going to, go to where is the audio setting? Where on the it? bottom left corner, there's the microphone icon, and you'll want to click on that more button. That the arrow. The arrow. And then and, where? And audio settings. Yeah, the... I have it on the right. I have it on the right instrument, but um, yeah. yeah. Um, well. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm. Yeah, I. I don't know why that. Why that's not coming across. It should be coming across. But. Um, yeah, I, but in, I have it all the time. So. In either case, you know, just percussively on the guitar, you can do all manner of creating. You know, a rhythmic bit. Uh, you know, which is which is so helpful, or arpeggiating chords, or uh, doing a polyphonic style of playing you know finger style where uh you've got the bass doing one thing and the and the, and the melody playing the other you know as segovia said the guitar is, is a mini orchestra so you can do so much with it just like just like piano um but obviously uh you know to just bring a guitar with you is is super easy to do um if you play guitar you play bass and you play ukulele well, a lot of people don't know this, but but basically the string, right, Stuart knows this. So the bottom four strings of a, a guitar are the bottom four strings of a bass, except the bass is an octave lower. And the top three strings of a guitar is a ukulele, but a uh, perfect fifth, one, two, three, four, a perfect fourth up. So it's like, um, so it's like, you know, you play the guitar, all of a sudden you can play multiple instruments if you just understand how, how to, you know, what the, what the basic theory is about it. And I teach theory in the courses as well, but I, but I do it from a, again, from a, a standpoint of this is why it's helpful to know this. So I'm not a big fan of let's get out our books and let's study some jazz theory. You know, it's like, if that's what you want, I've got that. But uh, but 
you know, we start with the basics of understanding why it is that we would want to do that, you know. Uh, and then I, I ask that question several times in the program is why, because if you can answer the why about anything, you're going to get to where it is that you're trying to get to, you know, much quicker. Now, um, yeah. Um, I think we completely agree with everything you've said thus far, Eric, but mm -hmm. I would love for Brett to elaborate a little bit as the legendary vocal coach that you are. Why is it important for singers to learn another instrument? Well, it's like when you learn another language, you, if you, if you say amore in Italian, it just has a, says a little bit more than I love this girl. Amore is just a different thing. And every time you say that, uh, in Chinese, well, I need, you know, you can say that and you think you're just being nice and they're like, that's some serious words. You realize that every time you learn another language, your brain jumps another track. Absolutely. Add another depth to to who you are as a person and i've learned just a little tiny pieces of different languages and so every time i do it, it broadens my uh, creativity it broadens my perspective but as a singer every time you add an instrument suddenly your stock goes up i'll tell you this if you're a singer and you're out singing you and you add guitar to your singing mm -hmm. and you learn to play well and it doesn't take long to sound confident you get one song you get it down then you get two, then you get three. If you only have three songs down from that point where you three songs that you can nail. If you have three songs and you've added that guitar to your singing, you've also added a zero to your bank account. Yeah. It's suddenly you're making way more money. Same exact singer. One guy up there, lead singer, doesn't play anything. Same exact type of music. Other guys up there playing. Keith Urban, he's got competitors. He's got people who sing better than he does. I trained him. He's a great singer. He's got people who sing better than him. But when he plays that guitar, everybody loses their mind. I had to tell, I think you'll get a kick out of me. I might have told you this mm. uh, before, Eric, is that in his lessons, I tell him, hey, put down the guitar, sit on your hands and sing. He goes, I, I can't. <laughs> so it became his yeah. secret. He had to like, right. you know how you put down your voice, learn yeah. the guitar, don't sing for a minute. You're still singing in your head. I said, you still playing in your mind? He goes, yeah. I said, you know, when you'll become a legend, and think about this parenthetically, because I'm talking about learning guitar, but I told him the second you sit behind a piano, you'll be a legend, because everybody knows you can play guitar. Yeah. And then he did that tonight, I want to cry. And he did that. And I see people who are great pianists. Uh, Phil, remember him? Uh, uh, good friends with Joey Messina, Phil's. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Country singer, remember him? It's a good day for a beautiful goodbye, something like that. Anyway, yeah. it's a big feel, big guy, big voice. And I always played good piano and he'd thrash that piano, kind of like a, a, the Billy Joel of country. And then one time he got up there and sang Love Me Tender with a guitar. Phil Vassar, right? Yeah, Denise. Phil Vassar. Yes, thank Phil you. Phil Vassar destroyed everybody when he got up that guitar. Girls are crying, people are falling, just, I mean, they're, they're out of themselves. And yeah. everybody knows music piano, so when I get up there and I'm, I play with a band and I've got a guitar in my hand, they go, oh, I, I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you didn't know. Yes. It's, a nice, it's a nice, healthy surprise. Like I say, you add, a, you add an instrument, you can add a zero. Prince had quite a few zeros after his whatever millions that he, he earned. I think he finished with 400 million. And that's because he gave away so much money. Yeah. He worth about $3 billion. He, he earned over $3 billion in his career. That's not too wow. bad. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's he, cause... something about an instrument that, that it just adds another dimension. Like you start seeing things in a different way. I do it every time I sit at the piano. And I don't play piano very much, but when I do, um, I'll learn I'll learn some classical piece or what have you. And I'll um and I'll go through it slow because I'm I'm not a great piano player, but when I do it, you know, again, talk about it forces me to slow things down. And that is where we learn is when we slow things down. Um, and when I'm doing that, I have a whole nother appreciation for the melody, for harmony, for the chords, uh, just uh, uh, kinesthetically, just all things, you know. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I play... You know, once you play an instrument and you and you know some basic theory, you can relate it to all different, you know, instruments. So like it wouldn't take me any time. It'd take me probably 
you know, half a day to get to get pretty good at mandolin. I used to play mandolin. I play ukulele. I play bass. I play I've played banjo. I have played you know a little bit of piano, uh, just enough. Like a couple years in college, but um, yeah, every time it brings a whole other dimension to what it is that you do. Eric, um, I got a question for you. We've got a lot of students who um, so that we know can play the guitar, right? Yeah. They, they've, they've had some sort of experience with it. They're strumming chords, they're playing downtown and everything. Um, but are, are there things for the, the guitar player in your courses who already knows how to play Smoke on the Water and Paranoid and can strum a G chord? Can you talk to us a little bit about the more advanced courses? Yeah, absolutely. So basically what I've, what I've done is, um, you know, this all started from, hey, I want, you know, it started from this book where I'm like basically using some of the things that I talk about, the, the you know, the uh, break it down, slow it down, the mindfulness, uh, Pareto's rule, uh, following things in a certain sequence. Um, and then under having the, the psychological understanding that uh, each step is going to take a little bit of time, but if you honor step one, step two will present itself and you'll get through step two, just like you did step one. And you just keep going to that process until whenever, whenever you decide, Hey, I'm as good as I want to be, you know, it's just a, it's just a continuum. And so, um, you know, I have, I've got, you know, my pro system is, is broken down into uh, beginner, intermediate and advanced, like literally tabs that, that go through all of that. Um, and so, you know, once probably similar to, to vocalization, once you have the basics down and you get those, you know, they become a part of you, then you can start getting into the more nuanced things because you've built that foundation. And unfortunately, most people, when they get into guitar, they never build a foundation and then they keep bumping up against this place where they're like, well, I never got, I never got beyond that. And that's because they didn't build that foundation. And it's literally, it, that is everything they're going to bring with them for forever, no matter what genres they play and how deep they go down the rabbit hole. So, um, so then it breaks off into, you know, whatever desire that you want. If you want to do swing guitar, if you want to do blues, if you want to do blues lead, if you want to do uh, rock guitar, uh, finger style, like basically I've broken this down into, into these different paths that you can go to, or you're like, I just want to study theory for a bit, then boom, we've got that. Um, and then basically what, what I do with, uh, it's called the Unstoppable Guitar System Pro. And so I, I named it that because it's like, again, that, that continuum, it's like you stop if you, if you care to stop, but I'm not going to stop producing for you guys to get you to the place that you desire to go. And so um, I have it broken down into the, all these systems, but then with pro and we're, we're doing this uh, today, uh, Brett, as well with what, what you're offering your folks is um, I have a program called the 365 guitar plan. And essentially what it is, is I, I, I said, there are seven focus areas that guitar players should be focusing on in regards to, um, dexterity, uh, finger style, hammer-ons, pull-offs, certain picking styles, uh, theory, scales, sequences, those sorts of things. And so what I did is I said, okay, this is the way my brain works. I wake up in the middle of the night, like I did last, I woke up at one 15 this morning and never went back to sleep because my mind was reeling. Um, so uh, I said, I'm, I'm, I've got these seven focus areas or seven days of the week. I'm going to start them off really easy for, for one week. And then the next week, I'm going to turn up the heat just a teeny bit. And I do that over 52 weeks. So by the end of a year, you can take anybody who, who, who had zero belief that they're going to get any anywhere. And if they just stick to the to the daily showing up, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes or, or an hour, uh, they're going to get the results because it's impossible not to, because I just turn up the heat just a teeny tiny bit. You don't even feel it. So by the end of a, a, a year, and I've got folks that have gone through the program now like four or five times and they just speed up the metronome now. Um, that's a whole nother part of it that's that we're including with uh, UGS Pro. To it, I mean, we're we're talking over 
it's a lifetime of lessons. It's a thousand, over a thousand lessons when you combine those two courses. And that may sound daunting, but it's like this. If you focus on, on what you, where you are today, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, you focus on what it is that you're doing today because that's the only thing that matters. And also your desire, right? You don't, if you don't like blues guitar, don't be looking at the blues lessons, you know, but they're there for you. Should you decide to get bit by the blues bug, then you can follow that path. But in the meantime, what is it that you want to do? Well, I'm a singer songwriter. I want to get good at singing and playing guitar at the same time. Cool. We got that. Here it is. Um, cool. I would like a more in-depth knowledge of, of rhythm guitar and strumming. I'm never going to play, I'm never going to play lead guitar. So you know, boom. Okay, here you go. Here's that path. Um, and then in my programs, unlike unlike a lot of guitar programs out there, you know, you you buy the thing and then you don't really have any sort of support. Well, in every single post that I have, you're going to see a place to put your questions, and you'll see I've answered every single one of tens of thousands of questions because that's I'm obsessed with it. This is what I do. I sit with, as soon as we get off this phone call, I'm going to be literally answering answering questions because I love moving people ahead. And um, so, not only do we do that, um, I do the three hours of live every every month, which normally I charge three hundred bucks an hour. So, like that's why I always tell my guys, my 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 students, I say, get in there and take advantage of this. I'm here for you. Like this, I have people paying 300 bucks an hour, uh, but you get this as part of the system. Um, and so, um, Dad, gone it, Benny. I forgot the original question. I went off again. I do this. I get too excited. I got to stop with the caffeine or something. No, not at all. <laughs> well, I like it. It's a lot of content. Well, Brett, one of the things that you've taught me and you've taught us at Singing Success, Brett, you are uh, <clears throat> uh, brutally honest in, in a way that that we need. You know, I, I went to sing a song one time for Brett, um, and I pick up the guitar. I've been playing forever, and I, I was I wasn't thinking clearly. It, was, it wasn't my best moment, and I thought I thought he was in a rush, um, but it's my fault, right? So I start playing the guitar without tuning it, and I could hear that it's a little dissonant, the sound of the chord. So Brett stops me and he goes, tune the thing. Always <laughs> tune the thing. You never shine bad light on yourself. You could have just stopped and tuned it, you know, yeah. sort of a thing. So one of the things that Brett has emphasized and just re-emphasized is musical excellence. And, uh, oh yeah, that's a little bright, isn't it? Sorry, yeah, guys. The sun just came out. <laughs> so, Beautiful. so I, I know, Eric, that Brett thinks the world of you and your system, and I'm just so blown away that you've enrolled over 700,000 people um, in your courses. That's absolutely insane, and I think it just speaks to the um, the teacher that you are. But can you, uh, Thank you. Can, you, can you pitch Eric a little bit more? To yeah, to yeah. Look, look, the deal he's given us, uh, I'll, I'll let you explain what what all they're gonna get for a deal for all those who joined us today. I mean, he's giving you just guitar wisdom, a general sense of guitar wisdom. And look, you if you just watch his tips online, you get your money's worth and you didn't spend anything. If you had to pay $100 a tip, you'd say that was worth 100 bucks. And I promise you, just the last one that I just, the very last one I watched, I pull it up because it's the last one I watched on this strumming pattern, that was worth way more than a hundred bucks to me. Because suddenly there's a bunch of songs that I realized that I just, the lights went on. So I know how many songs use that particular pattern. And I've been around guitar for a long time. I'm an I'm a okay player, you know, I know how to accompany myself. But imagine he's giving you free stuff and then he's gone above and beyond that. And for the price of a couple lessons with him, you get how many total will lessons will be in the course that we're offering today for them? Man, I stopped counting at about a thousand. So I I just stopped counting. <laughs> and I, and I, it's not necessarily how many is, but but still, like that's that's approximately the size of the course. Every now and then I'll I'll I will tweak things and I'll say, man, I could com actually combine these two and and be yeah. more more direct with this. But yeah, over a thousand right now. So uh, and and the deal you're getting, uh, I think what is three hundred three hundred. It's it's we're I, we're doing thirty percent off, so it's it's literally over two hundred dollars off just instantly. Yeah, that's amazing. what we normally do. And and so basically, they're paying about forty cents a lesson instead of three hundred an hour. 
And if you only use 10 lessons, it would pay for itself over and over. If you only use 10, don't be dumb. Don't yep. be lazy. Don't be stupid. And that sounds mean. Don't be stupid. Yeah, it's stupid to get to get more than your money's worth. If somebody buy, sells you a Ferrari and they say it's $500. Well, I don't really drive a Ferrari. If you buy a Ferrari for 500 bucks, you should take it out for a spin every now and then. <laughs> and this yeah. is that. That this is like getting a Ferrari for five hundred dollars. It's the equivalent to that financially, and you hit play. I think I've watched about fifteen lessons so far, and I, I need to go further. I, I keep going back to the one because there's one on this picking pattern, uh, a, a guitar picking pattern. He said this is a little unconventional. I went, wow, that changes everything for me. All this time, my picking did, didn't sound clean. And, People hear me say, man, you just sound kind of pro, Brett. I know your guitar is your main emphasis. I mean, piano is your main emphasis, but your right. guitar is sounding really well. It's sung out at uh, my friends, uh, Scott Waugh, the movie director guy. He has a uh, saloon in his basement, and, and I was saying, and I play guitar. He goes, I didn't know you played guitar. I said, well, <laughs> I said, get, get a little bit better. I need to practice more. But yeah. the fact is, if you can just do, if you only did one lesson a week, but you won't just do one lesson. So because you'll say, man, I got to do more and you can get as good as you want to. It's just showing up, yeah. show up every day. You, many of you get up every morning and you go to work and you don't think, well, maybe I, I don't think I'll go to work today. You don't do that. And if you get obsessed with something, it becomes a glorious, beautiful habit. A beautiful this is a beautiful addiction we're all addicted mm -hmm. to something mm -hmm. addiction is inescapable what you're addicted to is the more important question mm -hmm. i'm addicted i wake up and i do this little exercise warm-up program i thank god for another day i thank thank uh i'm thankful for my kids i tell them i love them and then i go and i play some scales and then i play a bot piece every morning this one bot piece it wires my brain and then when I come back up from breakfast and coffee, I go up and I strum uh, a couple of these the chord progressions that you, you recommend, the C-A-G-E-D, just getting those through, just making sure I have those clean. And, and then I run through a couple songs and then I work on my composing because I'm writing film scores now. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but uh, I'm obsessed. And when you're obsessed, you can't be stopped. And if yeah. you're a singer, if you're a singer, you can't carry a piano in your suitcase. Yeah. You've got it. Every time I go to Florida, I've got my guitar, my guitars with me. And the funny thing is, Eric, when I am out there, I play more guitar in that week than I do in the last three months. Yeah. Well, when you're sitting by the ocean, that's like what you got to do. You got to have a ukulele or a guitar. Yeah, I have to. It's a magical. Because people get weird about the piano being on the beach and then there's the sand and everything. Yeah, that's not that. It doesn't work out too well. It is obnoxious. It just doesn't go with the waves. It's just not. Right. <laughs> no, and also, Brett, we're, you know, on this, um, I, I'm do, we're doing a 30 day money back guarantee because some of your folks may not know of me and you're being kind enough to, to, you know, put me out in front of them and what have you. But, um, you know, I've, I've always said my job is to help people get from here to there. And if I'm not a good fit for them, I don't I don't want their money. I don't I want I want them to be happy at the end of the day. You know, you got to have happy customers. So um, it's a 30 day money back guarantee. If you get in there and you guys are like use it for 29 days and you're like, man, I got everything I wanted out of it. But I this is not for me. Then absolutely 100 percent your money back guaranteed it's it we we want we want people who are passionate in there and that's no hard feeling so just fyi on that yeah so there's one one uh guy i heard once talking about something a similar type of uh, a pitch of an idea and he said to, to the person when he was asking them he said what do you got to lose yeah what have you got to lose he, he said a little different more eloquent than that but it's you don't have anything to lose well, I don't yeah. want to you, and here's the thing a lot of you think you don't have time but you have time we all have the same hours in a day and when, when people do a day log and they look at their day well, how do I spend my day I I have what I call day by design I design my days and you have stuff like this in your course to help them help trigger that 
this is what you do as part of your day and here's how to fit it in with your day. Uh, Y'all have time. Everybody has a half an hour. Everybody has a half an hour. I work all the time. So do I. I got three businesses. I'm a full-time single father. I find time. But I don't find time as if it's hiding. I make time because it's mine. Yep. I take authority over my time. I take authority over my day. When I need to get up and go, you've seen me. We've been out there having breakfast, and we, we only see each other every now and then when you pop into Nashville. We're like, oh, got to go. Bye. Yeah. You make time, and you do the thing you're passionate about, the things that you love, and you just do it. There's no, there's no, there's no barrier except for excuses. And let me tell you all what an excuse is. Excuses are tools of incompetence and they build monuments to nothing. And those who skillfully use excuses seldom amount to anything. So you ditch your excuses and replace your excuses with reasons, reasons that you're passionate about something and that you will not say no to yourself. And some of you all, including me, feel guilty when you practice too much. That is just stupid. It's stupid to feel guilty about getting good at something. I mean, I you know I practice kind of too much. He comes here and if I don't, if I don't have students, uh, for uh, I only have I only teach a dozen students uh, a, a, a week because of all the things I'm doing, and I got to protect my money maker here a little bit. But he knows I come in here early before my student because I have a keyboard at home and a piano here, so I come in here and, and I play and I get after it, don't I? Yeah, I thrash this thing because I love every minute of the day and I am passionate. You can do this. You people feel intimidated, you do one lesson. Mm-hmm. And then you yeah. do it, and then you pretty soon you get addicted, and you become like Eric's maestro students, who their before and afters are are ridiculous, right? Absolutely, you know. absolutely. Well, hey, um, before we wrap up, we've got a few people that are wanting to ask questions. So, Eric, yes. do you have a couple minute for for a few questions? I do, and I'm looking at the chat. Uh, that would save us a little time here, um, unless you unless you want to just you know unless you if you want to lead it too. Uh, what, why don't you, uh, I'm going to let him, he's got to get to a session. So, um, okay. You know that. Uh, I'll speak of time. Um, <laughs> okay. Excellent. Benny, thank you so much. Thank you. See you, buddy. I appreciate you, man. Okay. Um, okay. So here we go. All right. Um, yes, it's lifetime access to the system. Uh, access, uh, 100% lifetime access, um, meaning, you would also, in a year's time, get literally 36 live broadcasts with me, so three a month, um, which uh, allows you to really dig into the nitty gritty and be able to, to for I mean, everything, 99% of everything that's asked during my lives is answered in the program, but it's nice to be able to say, hey, give me a quick tip on this and then direct me in the course, because as organized as we have everything, it's still nice to just you know, time, time, you know, our time is our, is our greatest asset. So absolutely. And I'm, I also add to it. So literally I just added a whole, uh, gosh, it must've been like 80 something videos, uh, chords and uh, chords and rhythm guitar, basically a whole, whole nother course that I just added in there like this week. Uh, and so when you're in there, you're in there, you get it, you get all that good stuff. Okay. So I'm sorry, I'm scrolling from the end here and working up, uh, there is a size for a guitar. I think mine is too big. It might be, uh, but a lot of times, so there are like kind of student models, like smaller guitars. So try that out. Look, if something feels a certain way, whether it is too big or not, or whether it is whatever you think it is, the thinking is going to hinder you some, right? So uh, try a smaller guitar. And if it helps, then you got mentally, you, you kind of got over that, that bit. Uh, a lot of times, though, I mean, when you're just playing guitar, like anything else, it's awkward at first. So it's it's like anything, learning learning a new language. So just remember that. But at the same time, if you can make things easier for yourself, then absolutely do it, you know? Um, 
Okay, uh, Kat is saying I have access to UGS standard and 365 standard. Is that is that lifetime access different? No, you have lifetime access to that as well. Everybody gets that for free. Um, but what I would tell you is we're only doing this until Sunday. So if you go to my website, you're going to see that this course is a lot more. Uh, and I've just done this for for Brett. So if you end up doing the the, the free uh, the standard and all that. Make sure you come back to to the link that Brett is going to give you guys, because otherwise you're going to be paying what everybody else pays for it. Okay, so that's FYI, you get it a lot cheaper there. But um, but standard is a, a course that I provide for folks for free to, to get their feet wet, um, and it's beginner videos, it's foundational, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's definitely a spec in the ocean compared to what pro is okay uh thank you cindy for posting that link there um okay yes lifetime access um okay you can ask questions now um always struggled with bar chords i use a capo how do i stretch my fingers on the fretboard and important is it to memorize all all the notes on the fretboard. So in the beginner section of this, guys, I show you a method that will literally have you memorize the entire fretboard in no joke. I think the video might be six minutes long. And I promise you that you will understand it after this. Again, this is the, this is the types of things that 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 Brett and I do is, is take something that was difficult. And once you've done it a thousand or 10,000 times like I have, you start going, well, this is the easy way to do it because you're, that's how our brains are designed, right? So um, so as far as, um, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. okay, to memorize all the notes, yeah, that's super easy. And I'll show you that right in the beginning there. As far as bar chords, um, two things. There's building strength and there is technique. So just like with your singing, uh, you can, you can ah! and you can use your, your vocal wrong and sometimes you can hit that note. You can also do damage to your voice and definitively you're going to tire your voice out, right? Because I used to do this all the time. Start, started listening to this guy's uh, DVDs and then I just was like, uh, I'm not even going to attempt that note if it, if it feels uncomfortable. I'm going to work into it. Uh, and that made all the difference in the world. Thank you, Brett, for that. But same thing is, uh, so you have Strength and you have technique. And so one, one could think about it similarly with the voice. You could build strength in the voice, whether that's the diaphragm or uh, or what have you. But uh, there's also technique. And technique, it, it trumps the, the strength. So uh, back in the day, I would have kids that were seven years old playing bar chords. And then here comes my, my construction worker who has strong hands and couldn't play a bar chord. So uh, proof that it has more to do with the technique. So I show you that, how to break that down by doing two notes and then three notes and four notes and five notes because a bar chord, you know, is usually a five or six note chord. Uh, and if you just attempt it, that's like, you know, trying to do, trying to do something Again, the juggling unicyclist on a tightrope. You're trying to do too many things at once. And so what happens is psychologically you defeat yourself uh, as opposed to having these, these wins along the line where you can actually see the progress. I firmly believe in you being able to see the progress. Otherwise, it's no fun. If you go to the gym, you work out, you don't see anything's happening. It's not going to entice you to go to the gym again. But the second you start seeing results, you're like, I'm back in, right? Uh, and so and with bar chords, I do that. Um, okay. What's the best guitar to buy as a beginner? There isn't a best guitar. There's what's best for you. That's another video that I teach you right in the beginning, uh, with electric and acoustic. I say, uh, budget, feel, and sound. And that's the mantra budget, feel, and sound. If you have a thousand dollars to, to, to buy a guitar, don't, don't, be seriously playing two thousand dollar guitars play them so you understand that maybe there's a difference and maybe it's not maybe it's hype maybe you're buying into something that isn't uh, necessarily going to help you which is which is why i say go with the budget play all the guitars in your budget uh, but feel is really important and sound is really important and those are two things that you know and you know only hey this guitar feels much better than this one you don't need an expert 
to to do to tell you that if they told you that yeah, this one that plays a lot worse and sounds worse that's the guitar for you would you believe them anyhow no you go with what what feels good so use your instincts um have a have another guitar player friend play it if you still don't trust your instincts um and then also getting your guitar set up properly is is uh makes a big difference that's like buying a a used car and it uh, because you can buy a brand new guitar and it's not set up properly they rarely are but it's like buying a, a used car and it needs a tune-up and once you get it tuned up you're like hey man this feels great okay uh let me see if there's any other questions here i'm just looking for that with a question mark I'm here too and and you can get an affordable guitar you know uh, I just did, I just wrote an article for a magazine and this is the, they exactly, this was the exact question, you know, uh, same thing here. What's a great guitar for beginners. So you, you have to play different, some, some different guitars to go with what it is that you like the feel and the sound, uh, because your, your fingers are going to know that and your ears are going to know that. And it doesn't matter what anybody else plays. I have guitars that are uh, super expensive that that don't play the best in the world. And then I have guitars that are cheap that play great. Um, and that has more to do with the, the way they were constructed, how they're set up, this, that, and the other thing. So um, I can't, I can't uh, emphasize enough having it just set up properly. Okay, now scrolling all the way to the end here, see if there's any new questions. And then... Um, what are the jam tracks? Okay, ah, didn't even mention that. Look, there's so much in this. This is why I say get in there and try it out because like there is absolutely no way uh, if you've ever had a spiritual experience or you've ever uh, you know been elated in your heart in any massive capacity, there's no words that are going to describe that. It just like it pales in comparison, right? Uh, so uh, same thing with this course. This is this is my. Uh, magnum opus, right? It's like, uh, is, this is what I've literally been spending my life doing for over 40 years now. Uh, so like I forgot to mention, there's over 600 jam tracks in here, which is what you would use to practice uh, noodling, to practice your chords over, to you know, have them in all different keys and different genres and what have you. And then recently here, I developed several thousand visual jam tracks. So you can see the chord on the screen, if you were maybe playing uh, keys to it and you're like, okay, there's an A7, there's an E7, there's a D7, and you see it going by in real time with the music, the professionally recorded music. Um, so I have many of those as well inside the program. Um, that's what jam tracks are, and they're so helpful. It's basically like having a band that you say, hey, I want this style in this key, uh, just keep playing it uh, over and over and over again because I got to work on my chops. You could you literally could vocalize over this stuff as well because uh, blues. I've got a lot of blues tracks in there. You could vocalize pentatonic and that that sort of thing. And um, usually, when you, I'm I'm sure Brett has mentioned this before. You know, when you hear people do trills, a lot of times, uh, am I right, Brett? That's usually pentatonic trills. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. uh, black note. Yeah. Uh, so you literally could 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 be working on that as well. For your vocals um setting up a guitar properly absolutely important did you say you have a free course for beginners i do if you go to my website yourguitarsage.com you will see that there it's there but again if you if you have intentions on going further make sure you use brett's link because it's literally going to save you over 200 bucks immediately okay um okay uh, any last questions? I've got, let me see, probably have another five minutes because I'm, I'm starting another uh, another call with my students at 2.30. But are there any, any last questions or anything that you want to say, Brett? I think the final question would be, you know, when people just say, oh, my hand hurts so much. I mean, we, you and I have talked about this. Uh, and I, I already know the answer. I'm asking a rhetorical question. Sure. When talking about this. People said, oh, but man, my hand hurts. I have to squeeze so hard to make a note. Mm -hmm. and like, man, it, it, ain't, it ain't right. But you can talk about that a little bit, about why people's hands hurt and they think they need to be strong. You, you address a little bit. We're talking about little Korean kids and Chinese kids playing Bach and Borets and stuff like that, which I've seen. Yeah. 
Can you talk Absolutely. a little more about that? Absolutely. What, so when you say that, I think about three things immediately is, uh, you know, number one is uh, the guitar itself. So we could put that akin to how are you sitting when you're when you're singing? If you're like this or or better yet, maybe you just uh, maybe you didn't sleep really well and you're dehydrated. That would be, you know, how much you're going to get out, how much you could know all the technique in the world. But if you're dehydrated and haven't slept for two days, how well are you going to sing? Not very well. So you could that is akin to the guitar not being set up properly. You're starting off not very well with that. If you're well hydrated and everything, you're going to be able to sing well. If your guitar is set up well, that's going to be an advantage. The next thing would be technique and strength. So strength comes through rehearsing. It comes through practice. It comes through repetition, obviously, right? Because what happens is all these little micro nuances and what have you, whether it's your voice or the guitar, um, you, you're not going to actualize them until you're doing them. The only way to do something is to not be able to do it and then to try to do it. Every single thing that we that we can do today, we couldn't do other than basic bodily functions as a baby. Every single thing that you can do today, you once could not do. So the excuse of, well, I can't do it, and I get this all day long on YouTube and everywhere else, well, I can't do that. Well, no, of course you can't do that. That's why you lean in. That's why you're doing the lessons. It's the same thing vocally, right? So, um, so the instrument's got to be got to be legit because you can have all the best technique in the world and the strength. And if your strings are way high off the fretboard, you're going to have a problem. So assuming that the guitar is right now, you've got the repetition down. Your technique is a huge part of it because if you're holding your hands properly on a chord, you know, if I'm holding my my hand like this, which as a a seasoned guitar player, I can mm -hmm. I can play like that with my thumb over the top of the neck. It's not a problem. But for beginners. Uh, you quite, haven't quite learned how to do that yet. Similar to a vocal fry. If you're going to be singing heavy metal uh, and you don't know what the vocal fry should feel like, you're going to sing it. You're going to sing wrong. You're going to blow your vocal out. But once you understand the technique, now you can cheat a little bit because you're doing it properly. But uh, for beginners, you know, dropping that thumb is that technique. Playing on the fingertips is that technique. Playing close to the fret is the technique. And man, once you do this a few times. And like I say, I walk you through it in such a step-by-step -step fashion that it's impossible to not get it. Yeah. Um, you have, you'd have to just not want to do it then at that point. Um, once you get those basic foundational pieces down, everything's built upon that. And then it just becomes gravy. Then it's just fun, you know? Eric, can you drop your social media credentials in here so people can follow you and we can follow Simi all there too. And y'all follow us both, Singing Success. And and all of your different ones, you're both personal and your guitar, if you if you don't mind, and 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 go follow him on there and leave him some nice comments and uh, and we'll retag you so you get some of our followers because we adore Bill. This is what us about building a community, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Um, is there any last questions that you guys might have for me? Oh, and I have a yeah. There's a couple of them right there. Um, and if you're interested, do you want to see like kind of more professional stuff of me playing and what have you? We, we just dropped a new video today, my band. Um, you got to check that one out, Brett. I know you like um, uh, Gabe's, Gabe's vocals, but we just dropped a new one today um, called Lights. We, we were out, um, I don't know, we were out west somewhere. We, <laughs> I never know where we are. We're, we literally record a video or two and then uh, and then we're off because we're all got our professional lives otherwise too. But um, Gabriel the Bull is another another really cool project that I'm involved with right now that I really dig. So um, you can hear kind of, you know, I think some people, they go, oh, if you, you know, those that teach uh, or those that can't play teach, right? People will say that sometimes and it's like, I've literally played in so many bands growing up and played in the studio and what have you growing up um, that and and still do stuff. So um, that's uh, unfortunately, well, not fortunately, that comment is not true whatsoever. So if you want to see some professional stuff there, you can check out that Gabriel the Bull stuff. But um, and then, yeah, hit me up. Feel free. But but do remember, you know, feel free to 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 hit me up into anywhere on YouTube, on Instagram, what have you. I, I answer I cannot tell you, I've easily answered hundreds of thousands of questions. Uh, I, I've, we, we tallied it up 
uh, not too long ago, and it was well over uh, hundreds of thousands. Uh, but I, I answer with voice and everything else uh, on Instagram. So if you have any questions or anything, please let me know. But again, don't Brett's link because it's, it's literally going to save you a, a lot of money. And it's it, you go to my website right now, you'll see that that's, it is, does not have that discount. Yes. Thank you so much again. I appreciate you every time you've done anything like this for us. We've gotten such rave reviews. Everybody loves you. You're a kind hearted. Oh, you know, he's, you, he's a great teacher. He's a brilliant teacher, but he's a, even a better friend. And, and, and I'll give him the highest praise. He's even a better father. You watch him oh, with the son. Thank you, buddy. That guy is a great, great father. And that's so this other stuff flows from that. Thank you, bud. He's an easy guy to love. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. And Brett, thank you for having me. I appreciate it, buddy. All right. Take care, everyone. All right. Bye.